I'm showing five o'clock, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. And um, we have our department heads here. Let me let me say just a few things before we get started. Is it would be my intention to treat this as casual as we have the last two. That we will open the floor we'll try to be respective of each other's comments and uh, we will feverishly take notes I have a uh, uh, a whiteboard up here that uh, Chief Bradley or I one can can keep uh, up with some of our thoughts if we need to uh, let me say one thing that uh, is going to be my intention for 2014 is uh, we are going to change one way that we handle our accounting so we will be able to see every three months really where we stand in the past we have uh, allowed department heads to um, go ahead and expense their yearlies uh, in the first month and so it doesn't give us an accurate read of where we are um, in say June we don't know exactly where we are so we're going to change that that uh, orders already been out and all the department heads understand that the reason I tell you that is because um, this budget is uh, is tight and I, I want to know three months in and six months into 2014 exactly where we stand if sales tax are up uh, and we're holding our expenses in line um, you know then we'll know it we won't be guessing in June we'll know have a pretty good idea uh, I know that we cut back on some of our um, expenses uh, we cut travel and education back um, but it would be my intent intention that come May or June if we were out of that line item and we needed to continue to have training for especially for public safety and for certifications we've got the capability of coming back to the council and go hey look we really need to throw another 15 or 20 thousand dollars in travel we need to put another 15 or 20 in education or whatever the line item might be um, and so I know that we've we've said in the past that the budget is a guide um, but this next year it, it's uh, we're going to have the capability of, of really knowing where we are over three months so with that said uh, I, we will not go longer than seven o'clock tonight um, no matter what and if we have to have another meeting after this we will uh, we're going to stay until seven if we need to at six uh, we have a, an economic development announcement for Levy that will only take about five minutes. So, uh, with that, I will open up the floor and let me ask. Uh, we have two department heads that have prior commitments tonight that um, I understand they couldn't change those. And one is uh, Sandra Taylor Smith, history, and uh, Chief Davis's staff Christmas parties tonight. So, if anybody's got any <laughs> questions for Sandra, uh, on the history budget we can ask her first and if we've got any questions for Chief Davis let's let's talk to him first so that he can be excused to host his staff so with that anybody wants Sandra she's here does anybody need Sandra go ahead no no for no no for Sandra Sandra you're excused uh, how about Chief Davis anybody need Chief Davis Beth Miss White Yes, Mayor. Um, I missed the last budget meeting, and I did get a chance to watch it on the video, and it was really interesting to watch everybody. I'll say that. <laughs> Quite interesting. But you all did a great job. What I came away with was um, one particular thing I'm kind of struggling with, and you may have addressed it in the, earlier in this meeting, but not sufficiently, is the, the police and the fires, travel and education uh, monies that, are, that we have cut back in half. And, I personally don't agree that that cut should take place. I'm, I know that cutting travel and, and education is important, and we've done it across the board. 
but I really struggle with our first responders being asked to cut anything in that area of professional training that might occur. So um, I'd like to revisit that um, just generally. Um, is there it? Okay, Karen, what's, what's in PD and fire right now, um, travel and education? In the police budget, the education is 20,000 and travel is 22,500 for a total of 42,500. And in fire, each one of those has 10,250 for a total of 20,500. Okay, I, I think the question is, Chief, uh, can you make it on 42.5 if you really watch your P's and Q's or, um, or not? <laughs> well, you know I'm going to make it if that's all I have. Um, you know, I, your comments you said earlier about coming back and revisiting, I, I, you know, that's fine with us. I, there's some things that we're going to have to do and we're going to have to train. Uh, we've got a new training division now, new members in training that it, uh, they're going to do some, uh, attend some classes that will allow them to train the officers more than sending them out. Uh, some of the things that, the places that we have to go are expensive, and, uh, but, um, I mean, I, what I did is basically send out to all the captains what your plans are for next year, um, and their plans were right at $59,000. But, um, you know, they're guesstimating on travel and, um, you know, and a lot of times we get classes that are closer that, that doesn't cost that. Part of what's happened with, with grant funding, it's going away. And so some of the training that we had been able to go to before, like in Mississippi, it's not available anymore because it, it was free of charge. They put, put you up, fed you and everything. All we had to do was gas to get there. That's gone away. So that's going to be a, a little bit of an expense that we didn't have. But we're, we can watch what we have and come back if necessary. Ms. Robinson? <clears throat> My comment is, and uh, nothing against the police and fire, but we're all in this together. And a lot of departments are having to give up something. Now, we may not need to cut them as deep, but then we'll have to find the cut somewhere else. But I'm for the cut uh, uh, for police and fire, the amount that has been recommended. And simply because we're all in this together. It's, you know, everyone's going to have to tighten their belt and uh, we just have to work together. And then later on down the road, if we need to find some money or come up with money to add it back in or to take care of a need, then that's what, you know, we should do. But otherwise, I'm for the cuts. Bruce, Mr. Fouch. Um, I'll repeat this again. Public safety is our number one issue that I hear every time I'm out in public, wandering around talking to people. There is $45,000 in the Arkansas Regional Innovation Hub that could be easily transferred over to cover this entire amount. And our officers will maintain the training and qualification standards that they need. Well, if I might, I, you know, like I said before, we're watching closely what we do. And, and you know, it's kind of this is my first year, full year to be chief. I, can, I won't be able to pin it off on Chief Bradley anymore. Um, so I know that. And so we're really going to pay attention to what we're doing and, and make sure we're, we're spending the money that we, way we should. I agree. We all have to be a part of this. And, and, and I'm willing. I mean, we can, we're going to make it. If, we have to, if there's something that we need, we're going to come to you. And I think all of you are going to support it. Questions, comments? Ms. Ross? I, could Chief Bradley put what we're short right now up on the board? Just so but we're short well I mean with this so we're totally balanced right now but what we can addition make we could make additional right. cuts and take less out of so reserve the, though all right the question would be we're, what are we having to take out of reserve right now that's what I want to see that's just where we are right now where we're where we're at and what that leaves us in reserve I think is what I'm looking for the amount that's budgeted out of carry forward Right now, to balance the budget, is one million one hundred and fifty-eight thousand 
$608,609. And that's what we would have to take out of reserve currently, right? One one five eight six zero nine. And that would leave a balance of? That's for it. Yes. And what does that leave us in reserve? Uh, well, a lot depends on what happens right, in December, but right. we have about $7 million in fund balance right now. Plus the one million one we're transferring. It's after. No, minus that's the one million. That would be minus subtracting. That's after. We have seven oh, after that. Be, okay. be right five, at six nine, million. Five eight something like that. Six six even. But we have to remember anything that we take out of reserves got to be replaced if we want to keep it. Okay. Mayor. Yes. My original thought was that we could take more out of the reserve to, to, to accommodate this extra, uh, to get the police and the fire back to their uh, original amounts. Um, I think Alderman Fouch had a good suggestion and uh, with the uh, Innovation Hub and my thoughts on that, we could possibly take 20000 out of that and reduce that amount down to 25000 but it still leaves us with a shortfall because we need about 63000 to cover this. I'd further say that um, if these departments are given training money and they don't use it and it's not they're not you know that it's returned and I, I would think that our departments would be honest in that regard if there's something they didn't need I'd rather have our police and fire have this money available and know that they have it they're our first they're the, they're our, the forefront of this city there's really I mean they lay their line their lives down on the line for us every day all of them do and I just I feel like there's other things that we can't do for them, but this is one thing we can. Other comments? Well, I, I'm going I'm to speak against taking that money out of the Innovation Hub because, <laughs> number one, we just got a, the Innovation Hub just got a grant from the Delta Regional Authority for $250,000. We got another large, large sum of money coming in about a, uh, to a half a million dollars. So for, for the city of North Little Rock, where the, where the facility is going to be located, not to put their portion in would be an absolute disgrace. So. I agree. I agree. They, you know, as soon as that innovation hub spins off one business, we're all going to sit around and go, wow, that's a great idea. I mean, if the state's throwing money at it and Delta Regional Authority, which is eight state region, is is already announced 250,000 then I agree we certainly need to do our share. <coughs> Ms. Robinson. To uh, Ms. Scott, you're saying that the budget currently is balanced. Taking it. Correct. Co it's balanced. So technically what you all have worked on and submitted, we really don't need to take from anywhere because no. you know any more because we're balanced. Right, we're balanced with pulling 1.158 million out of our uh, fund balance, which is our so, savings account. So what I would like to see is that the recommendations remain as they are, and what we need to do is look, you know, long term, and that is to come up with those impact fees if it's no more than three or five dollars is what we need to look at, you know, uh, sanitation fees, you know, and put that in place. And then in the event that police and fire needs additional money or any department needs additional money, we would have monies available or funds available. It, it will be uh, my intention in January uh, to set up a committee uh, staff uh, of staff and we will gather all of the information that you could ever want um, as far as uh, revenue options and then we'll either present it to you as a committee or as a council as a whole probably would be a council as a whole and let us uh, you know look at and make decisions on what we're going to do in 2015 we need we need to make some of those decisions probably by April. So, Mayor, uh, if this is a balanced budget, and I've looked over this, and 
I don't have a problem with it, but if this is a balanced budget and that is what we were needing as a balanced budget, I suggest that we go ahead and we vote, you know, or accept the budget, and then if we need to come back later on in the year to review, make amendments, uh, or additional allocations, we do just that. And the department heads, in the meantime, will uh, let us know if we need to add, you know, make amendments to add to this. But I, I, I recommend we accept what has been offered to us. Ms. Ross. Uh, we still have some things that are unfunded. We have the, uh, I know we still have that position, the unfunded code officer. We're bringing more, you know, we've got the outdoor storage task force that we're going to be bringing some legislation on that, which is going to be additional enforcement. We've got, we're, it seems like every meeting we're adding something to it and we're putting more, and they've got to have another officer. We have that position. It's unfunded. Uh, the youth program, one question that I had too on that is 30, we're down to 35,000 on the youth program. I know 24,000 comes out of that for Thea. And are we still, do, we're not taking that no, no more? No, no. Um, we put some thought into that. Let me okay. give you yeah, just tell our, us what's our in thought. There. Uh, when you add up all the monies that, that we're putting towards uh, youth, yeah, okay. we're about a quarter of a million total because the, if I'm not mistaken, the Thea Foundation is 24000 mm -hmm. and it's in art and culture. Oh, you moved it over to art and culture? It's okay. always been there. Oh, okay. Um, and then we've got the Art Connection, which is 85000 which is youth-related. So that's 100000 then we've got uh, uh, the mayor's youth council, um, which is twenty thousand or whatever. Uh, then we have uh, the mayor's summer youth program, which is eighty thousand. Now, what does that come out? Is it's that in under salaries in, in, in administration? The admin, yeah. Okay. So you know, just quickly, there's there's two hundred thousand right there. So I I didn't feel uncomfortable at all of cutting that youth program down to thirty from seventy five because we're already spending two hundred thousand plus on youth. So um, that thirty thousand in youth is really just will be miscellaneous youth related expenses Additional. throughout the year. Okay. All right. And then. Uh, Six Bridges, which is Seis Puentes, I know we've got 25,000 in there. Is that that's considered youth too, correct? Well. I know it, it, it's both. It's both. It's both. It's both. It, you know, I mean, our Latino population is growing and, Mainly, and uh, they, they need uh, help uh, and, and they're running out of money quickly. So we need to help them. That's the reason we put that in there. It's a great program too. Uh, one other thing that we just discussed before, and I know that this is balanced, but anything that we can adjust or make any tweaks to to make sure that we've, you know, in the biggest bang for our buck. Uh, under communications, I see that app for $12,000 is still in there. Right. I still feel like we're going to have enough money from the website that we've got the money set aside for the website. We should have enough money for the app, too, on that. We, we cut the website back to what it actually is. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Missed we that. had fifty thousand in My the bad. original, and we cut it back to twenty-three or or twenty-five. Well, we what, need what maybe more than that, though. Okay, you may have cut it too much. I didn't catch that one. Well, that twelve thousand dollars on that communication app is that absolutely necessary right now? Well, I think that we are in that day and time that uh, social media is where it's at, and um, you know. We looked at doing a report and repair hotline. We thought we could do it by phone and all that, and it just didn't work. This app is working throughout the country in aggressive communities, and um, it's very inexpensive uh, with the, what we're getting. Uh, you know, I think at, at the next council meeting, uh, Nathan is going to make a presentation and tell us about the app and also about our new website. Uh, so if I started trying to tell you about the app and all the things that it does, but not only does it give you an opportunity to report any and everything, it also creates work orders and everything else so that, that uh, management can keep up with the reports in and, and how reports are handled. And it's just a great tool for 
you know, a thousand dollars a month. Actually, I think it might be a little bit less than that, but a thousand a month. So I really wouldn't want that to go away. If um, you know, if, if next year, you know, it might only be a one-year deal. If uh, if next year doesn't start looking a little bit better, so. Well, Mayor, what what um, what I'd like to, you know, say and recommend to to my peers here uh, on the council is that. Uh, the budget group or committee has submitted a balanced budget and we as council members can always relook at the budget and and I'm sure if finances get uh, for there need to be some cuts later on and I'm sure that the mayor you know our department heads or someone will get with us and mention it to us my thing is I think they've worked hard and putting together this budget. I commend them uh, for this budget. And y'all, I just think that we should go ahead and accept this for now. And if we need to come back later and make changes, do it at that time. Okay, anybody else? Well, I, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I missed this. I was working off the sheet of changes. I didn't realize that the, there had been changes made to the sales tax capital improvement because I wasn't going back and forth to that. So I was just looking over this. What's this building at 19th and Pike that we're having remodeled for the 30,000? Did you see that? Well, it's, uh, you know, for it's, you and I've been around here so long, it's the old Dr. Jolly and Dean's office that we ended up with when we bought the right of way through there and then it became personnel it was hr uh, for a while and then i think code was there for a while and then uh, we turned it into baron cross neighborhood group meeting place and then uh, uh, police department ended up with it uh, as storage it's a nice building and it's in a great location right in you know right there by uh, Baron Cross which we're concentrating on some the Argena Community Development Corporation okay which helped rejuvenate downtown and and the Argena neighborhood is at this point in time uh, having some cash flow problems uh, they're asset rich and cash poor and will be for a couple of more years until uh, those loans on the apartments at uh, on 7th street and then 38 individual homes uh, throughout Argenta are paid off and then they will be uh, their cash flow would be great so we we don't want Argenta community development agency uh, to go away so I thought that that would be a great place for them to office and save themselves a couple of thousand dollars a month uh, in rent. They would be close to a lot of their NSP2 homes that they're working on. Uh, we would fix the roof and the heat and air, and then in two years uh, they could start either paying us rent or we would have a, 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 a good building to continue forward with. So that was why we went ahead and put that in there. Can we go over these changes to the sales tax capital? I, I just, I, I didn't sure see can. these. Go. I we, just, that we was an exhibit A and I had exhibit B, so my, that's my bad. We got plenty of time. That, <clears throat> just for everyone's reference, it, it was part of the attachment with the legislation okay. that was filed. Okay. I know, and I was just looking at the sheet, the change sheet. I thought that I didn't realize that there were changes in the capital improvement. That was my. I don't think we changed a whole lot. No. There were some additions on here, though. Yeah, just the last. No, there's one hundred. What's, what's the Christmas tree and decorations for twenty-five thousand? Exactly what it is. Uh, the if you want to feel sorry for somebody, go <laughs> go over there and look at our Christmas tree that's sitting out in front on Main Street. It's probably ten years old and uh, uh, quickly uh, falling apart, and uh, so is a lot of our um, Christmas decorations that we hang on the streets. They're all old, and we really just have to work at it one year at a time. And so that's why I put that in there for uh, Christmas trees and to refurbish and purchase new, some of our angels and things like that that we hang up and down Pike and Camp and 
JFK and Broadway, et cetera. Uh, HVAC uh, speaks for itself, city services. Um, sanitation, I think we showed y'all photographs of the deplorable conditions in the dressing and bathroom areas in our sanitation department. And we've done a lot of that in-house already. We just need a little bump there to get over the, uh, the edge on that. Um, and then eleven thirteen thousand dollars worth of computers I have just a couple more things then uh, so the app is under okay one of the things too that I, I think that bothers me and I know with AIM, the $175,000, I understand the economic impact. I understand that it brings, you know, dollars in. But the $175,000, and we're cutting the fire and police. They've had no cuts. They've only had additions through the years. And we're cutting the fire and police that need their training by $63,000, the two of them put together. And we've left the AIM at uh, the one hundred seventy-five. dollars I would suggest taking 50000 out of that to go towards the police and fires training and travel, education and travel. I would be against that. Uh, I have talked to uh, their board, uh, which for the first time we have a, a really active fundraising um, board. And uh, if there ever was a year that we didn't need to cut them, it's this year, because uh, I think there's a real, really good chance that Dahoga is going to be here in the next few months. Now, they have agreed verbally um, that starting in 2015 that, that uh, they would start whittling back on the city's uh, portion of the museum at $25,000 a year So for the next five years. So that would cut back uh, 125000 off of that by uh, 2000 and whatever. We, we keep trying to find money from someplace else to cover this shortfall that Alderman White, I forget your name, that Alderman White was uh, um, making reference to on the police and fire. Well, it comes to what, uh, $60,000? 63. $63,000. You know, we, we, we got a lot of work to do on our budget uh, in the next year. Um, in my mind, if you're going to do it, just take another $60,000 out of reserves and let's roll on and get and just get this thing done. I mean, because you know, if, if we're going to if we're going to do that, then I want to I want to fight for this $40,000 that we're taking out of the youth budget. You know, but you know, I. I, I I'll eat that, or let's. Well, you know what? So let's don't let's don't take forty thousand out of, out of the youth budget. Let's take forty out of fit to live and put it back in youth. You know, so then now fit to live is suffering. Take another sixty thousand dollars out of the out of reserves, fund police and fire for their travel and education, and let's rock on. Can I say something? Sure. Well, while we're rocking on, let's go ahead and fund the unfunded code officers position too. Well. I mean, I, I really want to talk about that. Uh, you know, we've talked with uh, with with Tom Wadley, and I really want to wait a, a few more months. And the reason that I want to do that is I believe that uh, uh, we need another code officer. I just want them directed in a different direction. I think we need a code officer that is assigned to sanitation. And, um, but I hadn't made my mind up yet. I think we need to really see how well our community takes on to our new rules. And um, I, I think we, we need it, because Tom's spending a lot of time on sanitation complaints anyway. So if we can, if we get a new officer, I, I'm leaning towards right now uh, assigning a new officer to sanitation. I really think, you know, I've been in negotiations with um, police union and fire union and 
probably after the first quarter of this year, I'm probably going to come back with some proposals uh, for them that will be some increased spending. And once we put that package together, you know, I can include the code officer at that point in time. And by that time, Tom and Harold and Danny and I can can decide where that code officer is going to be best used. Maurice, you go. I just have a slight suggestion, but and nobody likes it. When we implement this sanitation fee, we'll have money to swim in to fund a code officer for sanitation. So no, we we'll have money to keep our. Reserve. Well, and let me let me do the one for our code enforcement. I'm I'm ready for the sanitation fee, but that's just me. Okay. Well, y'all. I mean, I want you everybody to think about that. Um, you don't raise a whole lot of money with sanitation fee. Number one. Number two is we pay a hundred percent. Our citizens pay a hundred percent of that fee, and you know the other option, of course, would be a sales tax, where we only pay sixty percent, and people that live somewhere else pay forty. So, think about that, uh, uh, you know, w before we make those decisions, Mr. Baxter. You know, the thing that that I keep coming back to is, you know, last year we took almost eight hundred thousand dollars, brought it for, brought it out of the reserve fund for thirteen. If you look at what we're trying to do here for 14, that's a 400 roughly thousand dollar increase from what we pulled out for 13. That gets us to that that 10% magic number, not that it's you know 10% of our reserve fee of what our budget is that we want to hold in there. If we're 400,000 short, quote unquote, this year, I just wonder what we're going to look at next year. I know that we we've bandied about a sanitation fee and I think somebody the other night said maybe two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars a year uh, mm. you know that's not gonna equal is that number not right I we have twenty two thousand uh, customers so multiply twenty two thousand times whatever fee you wanted to put on there and that's how much you're gonna get well I, I again you know Cost of doing business is going to continue to go up, and I, you know I just hate to to go in that deep because if I look at our unfunded requests, you know we've got almost eight million dollars worth of unfunded requests. You're talking about vehicles and things of that nature, hard goods that are again are not going to go down in price. They're going to continue to go up. Our stuff is going to continue to get older, break down, and increase our maintenance costs that much further. So I. That right there scares me. Me too. I think that. Yes, ma'am. That's one of the. Th that's why I asked uh, Miss Scott to give us a uh, all our outstanding debts, bonds, short-term financing, so that we can see where we are. We've got a lot of payments coming up. We've got a lot of balloon payments coming up, and I just wanted to make sure that we understand that we've got a lot coming up. So if we're going to be increasing anything, we're going to. I don't know where we're going to get the money because I certainly don't want to borrow anymore. I don't either. And that's you know one reason that we you know have worked the electric department budget the way that we have because I don't want to borrow the money for the uh, the hydro plant and so we're going to try to pay pay cash for it instead of borrowing it. Um, let's jump around just a little bit, uh, if we may. I know we've been focusing on the general uh, fund, but. Uh, we, you know, when we approve the budget at the next council meeting, it's also going to include the electric department budget. So, if if you had time to look over that, are there any questions? Uh, Jason's here to ask those questions, and is there anything that we need to to discuss on the electric department budget? And we'll come back to the general fund here. Just any comments, Ms. Ross? I just want to thank uh, Mr. Carter for keeping that ice storm away. <laughs> <laughs> We, we held a prayer vigil. I, I'm, that's why I'm getting I'm sure that you did. That's why I'm thanking you, and it worked. <laughs> it did. It did. Uh, uh, to an extent, we felt like we, uh, I've told folks we, we got all dressed up and our date didn't show up. But uh, it wasn't a good date anyway. Yeah. So uh, we, we were okay with that. All right. Any questions? Yes, Bruce. Um, we had hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in uncollectible electric bills. We do. And... 
The smart meters that you're requesting was uh, 800000 or something? It's a lot of money. Smart meter project is, and yeah, it, it, it's a very expensive project. My request is on those that any customer who has been disconnected, because uh, that survey that you were doing, I was, I was kind of happy that you were asking that, is any customer who is disconnected and comes back in to get reconnected has to have a smart meter put in that location, if at all, I mean, there's some locations and you can't do it, but. We're doing that right now. With, Anyone who is disconnected is put back on with a remote disconnect meter. Correct, and, and, the, and with a prepaid balance, just like a, uh, a, a prepaid debit card, where if you have $250 worth of electricity, when you hit your $250 worth of electricity, your account is closed and they'll come back in and reload their meter at a later date. Uh, we can't afford to keep carrying hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm sorry if these folks uh, can't pay their electric bill on time, but uh, we can't afford six, $800,000 a year in, in, in uncollectible money either. We're, so. we're not equipped to do prepaid yet. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, that's certainly an option that we look forward to being able to, uh, uh, to offer to our customers and uh, maybe even you know what we've thought about for some of our uh, residential uh, rental properties to, uh, to put everybody on prepaid. That's something that that's a discussion for city council that we'll talk about you know when we get to the point that we've got that capability. It's pretty cool. I've looked at it where they're running it in Florida. The folks who are on it, I think, love it because it's no deposit. It's, uh, you know, there's no kind of credit check. There's no, you know, blood of your firstborn child to try to set up an account in the first place. It is painless. You can set up uh, electric service online. You decide how much you want to put on the meter. You can, if, if you forget to pay your bill and the lights go off, it's not somebody showing up and then, you know, you've got an increased deposit and then you've got a disconnect and reconnect fees. It's just pull out your smartphone, hit the button, or go down to the library and get on the computer, load some more money on the account, and, you'll, and the lights just come back on. And, and yeah, we're going so. to be 100% residential by this time next year. Yes, sir. And uh, let me just say one thing about our, uh, our bad debts. It's maybe at an all-time low. Uh, David Melton yeah. has yes, done a done wonderful that. job, 300-something thousand yeah. dollars, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's reached as much as a million uh, over the past 20 years. So that's, you know, if you look at it, that's well less than 1%. So I think the industry norm is even, is around 1%. So we're, we're less than industry norm. Dave is doing a great job. He's sitting back here behind me, and I'm not just saying that because he's got tactical advantage on me right now. He, he really is doing uh, a great job to, uh, to help reduce our uncollected expense. Uh, and, uh, you know, but any, anything that we can do to help improve the process, we're certainly interested in exploring. One of the things our finance director was whispering to me was a conversation I'd had with her earlier. We would like for, to have our budget approved with a separate resolution because, like, I want to discuss uh, have a separate section in for uh, outage restoration. You know, right now we've kind of got a process that if all the lights go out and we got to get the lights back on, I mean, we're just spending money and getting the lights back on. I want to make sure that there's an authorization that's got oversight, that we're properly accounting for that and properly re reporting that to city council. Uh, so I'll be asking for authority that gives us, you know, that when we have a massive outage, City Council said, yes, spend the money, get the lights back on within these defined limits and report immediately thereafter because that's all kind of ambiguous right now. We're reacting where we think that you would want us to, but, but I don't think there's the clear lines of it. Let me, that we'd let me like. make one statement on that. These, these major storms are very, very, very expensive. Uh, I know that you saw on the TV that uh, Energy had brought in 3,500 uh, crew from other places and from other people. Those uh, 3,500 crews, and there's five men to a crew, so however many crews that is, 800, um, they cost uh, $7,000 a day. And the, uh, the other utilities can recoup that. You know, they'll go to the PSC and say, hey, we spent $30 million on this storm 
PSC allows them to raise their rates to collect that $30 million. City of North Little Rock, if, if it cost us a million dollars, we don't get any of it back. Unless FEMA. Oh. Right, unless <laughs> yeah. it's a FEMA reimbursement. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, we, we had two crews here for uh, one day, and um, it was clicking at $14,000, and we debated it, and we made the decision that it would be well worth the money if that storm had hit us like we had anticipated. So it's expensive to, um, to fight these storms. Ms. Ross. I have a couple of things. One thing, when uh, talking about our bad debts, and something that North Rock that we seriously as a council need to look at, too, is our deposit's $100 for new service. And that was great back in the day when your highest electric bill was probably $100, $150. We've got, uh, what, three times probably what it was at the time when, when it was a $100 deposit. So that deposit's something that we need to look at. And look what the other you know, utilities around us are charging, too. And that's true. It's, it can be particularly, you know, you're trying to weigh how burdensome are you on someone who's right. trying to sign up for service? How can we protect ourselves against bad debts? Trying to make a good business decision that works well for our community. That's really where we've tried to explore, uh, as Alderman Fouch was alluding to earlier, having trying to have a prepaid option or something like that where it's easier for people to sign up. It doesn't cost them as much money up front, but it still protects us against our losses. And uh, so we're going down that road. If, if we, uh, we want to look at our rates, you know, soon, as soon as city council wants, wants us to move in that direction, and we want that to be a part of it, is, is how we run our business operations. Because business losses are real. Uh, anytime we lose money, that's m more money everybody else has to pay. You know, so uh, uh, we, need, we need to cut back that, on that as best we can. I have one more question. On the, uh, the Sherwood franchise fees and tariffs, it still is a single item, line item there? We're going to break that out. Okay. Good, and I, I told you we do definitely. that. Because that's uh, when it's, you we're, see. We're doing it different now. <laughs> uh, well, and, it was, and it was in two right, line items. Right. We put it together because that's my fault. Okay, I just had this gag reflex at this. Too many numbers. 2,000 line items. I was looking at it and I said, we got to put some of these things together. So uh, Joe Folan's here with me. He can tell you that, you know, I do that a lot. And, okay. uh, I just definitely want, I want to see where we, we are. We just combined it. But we'll right. break those out. One reflects the, uh, uh, about 600,000 of that is a pass-through franchise that's paid by, their cu by customers who live in Sherwood. And the remainder of that is that the tariff, tariff rider that was brokered uh, a few years back and is part of our new uh, franchise agreement. Good. So you'll break that out before we vote on it? Absolutely, I will. Good. That's all. Okay. Any other? Mr. Fouts. And, and I'm not sure this is under the electric department, but you put $2.3 million a year into the utility accounting department. We do. Is that a city department, or is that an electric department, and is that like a franchise, free, a franchise fee that we're paying into UAD in behalf of the electric department, or...? That's money that we pay to the city of North Little Rock for providing us UAD services. So the electric department pays the city of North Little Rock's general fund for UAD to provide us utilities accounting services. Okay, and now that is a separate entity outside of the general fund. Is that correct? The UAD is not incorporated? It is. No, it, it is. UAD is. Okay. I thought UAD was within the general fund. No, that's just, that is, that's, okay. that's, uh, um, as far as I could tell, that doesn't fall under the general fund. So that's its own little fiefdom, separate from oh, no other way to explain it. But okay. And why it was set up that way years ago, who knows? Uh, but all the customer service clerks, everybody takes the phone calls. You know, does all the collections, does counts all the money every day. Right. Tellers, you know. So that's how much it costs to gather and collect. The money and handle the customer service we don't manage them they don't work at our place they work in the city services building they work under karen okay other comments and questions well what about the only thing that i've heard so far that uh it was miss white was was saying that she wanted to raise police and fire travel and education back up um, I'm, I'm looking around to see if 
if everybody wants to do that or if we want to leave the budget as is and adjust at three months or six months um what do we feel how do y'all feel i i definitely don't want to take any more out of the reserve i mean we're we're way above my comfort zone on this already so i, I i'm kind of leaning that that way i i assure you i assure you that our police and fire department will not be short on training and if they need to travel to train we will cut something you know whether it's uh, people or whatever they're not going to go underfunded in that in that regard yes ma'am um Alderman Witcher is senior council member and uh, have not heard from Mr. Witcher tonight so I just want to hear from Mr. Witcher what are your thoughts <clears throat> well my head's blank okay. and bare uh, I'm trying to put you on the spot <clears throat> uh, okay you know, having gone through this for the last 23 years <laughs> and lived with these budgets and then and watched watch things evolve uh, you know the, to me the budget is a living document uh, and it ebbs and flows with our, our cash receipts and with how well everything's doing uh, you know one of the things that might occur is you know our, our tax money may increase if the economy changes either good or bad uh, one of the things that could occur might be our generation that we you know I, you know I, I think that it probably will increase uh, you know based on our our history over the last 23 years uh, with our what I officially call the rock crusher <clears throat> uh, there are probably in June or July we'll have in my opinion a really good picture of where we are uh, and so you know I, I don't get excited at this point what I do know is you know we're going to have to face up and and we we need to uh, and, and Ms. Ross and I have, have kind of had this conversation about what to do on a long-term basis uh, you know we're gonna have to involve the public uh, with our situation and say you know you know do, do you like the services you're getting now you know what is it worth to you is there something that we're doing that we you don't think we should be doing and then we're gonna have to sit down internally and and value those services and, and what the public is getting for those services you know just like you would in a business uh, but you don't do those things in one or two three months you know when you're looking at a budget uh, so uh, as the mayor indicated you know there are a lot of decisions that we need to look at and make by the end of the year you know the bottom line is you know we cannot continue to go into our reserves uh, you, you know I, I guess uh, when Martin Gibson was still sitting across over there you know he and I pushed back and forth on Mayor Hayes regarding the money that we were taking out of the, the electric department uh, we have been fortunate it has allowed us to do a lot of things most cities our size cannot do uh, but <clears throat> the circumstances with the electric department are also changing you know and, and my opinion is instead of taking uh, was it 10 million dollars as I recall from the electric department for a 60 million dollar budget we should be maybe pulling five or six million bucks out of there uh, so you know there's just a lot of things that we need to talk about internally the so uh, the information that that we're going to be presenting to you after the first of the year uh, you know 
I believe it was Todd Larson saw somewhere and he emailed me and he said, you know, Conway is smaller than we are and their sales tax revenue is $8 million or whatever bigger than ours, you know, or, or is their retail business doing that much better than us? Well, when we got to looking, uh, Conway's got a 1.75% sales tax. Uh, we looked at Hot Springs. Uh, and Hot Springs has got a 1.5% sales tax. And so what we, uh, the information that we're gonna be giving you, we'll give you 20 uh, cities and what their sales tax are, what their sanitation fees are. I mean, we're gonna give you so much information that, uh, that you won't have any questions as far as what do we need to do and how do we need to address it. Uh, you know, I, when I met with, uh, the fire union the other day for the second time. Uh, there, you know, we haven't done anything uh, adjustment-wise with fire department since 2008, which is, you know, what six years. In their contract right now, it it says that we will pay 75 percent of their family insurance plan, and I told them. Uh, and, and of course I'll tell PD the same thing because I think their contract says the same thing. They're both out, um, they're not in force right now, I don't think. Uh, but I said I can't comfortably sign a long-term contract guaranteeing you 75% of your major medical for your family uh, because I don't know what kind of financial situation we're gonna be in. But I also told them um, that we were going to give them, we as in the city council, would give them and their families plenty of notice before we would make some major changes like that. We don't know what the insurance is going to be next year. You know, I mean, it's crazy enough as it is. But that's a huge benefit, and I don't want to take that away. But I also don't want to sign in blood, and I don't think y'all do either, that that 70 percent of our personnel cost uh, we're guaranteeing 75 percent and you know for a long period of time so all those things we got to be thinking about you know we got to be thinking about you know what our insurance costs are and what our, you know i mean it's, the list goes on and on so it's going to be a brutal 2014 as far as planning goes and we're going to have to do it soon. We can't wait till November to make these decisions. We're going to have to make them in April. Uh, that's my goal: is to have a have something presented to you by the end of February, and for us to to have a joint plan. You know, if if all of us aren't on it in, in it together, then it's not going to probably won't work. So it, it, we're going to all have to hold hands. That's why. The comments I've just heard today, really, um, even though I don't agree maybe with some of the details, it's, it's very impressive that this council is, cares so deeply about the city. And, and we, we don't agree on every little detail, but we do agree that we need to do better. And I believe we are going to do better next year. Um, some of the little small things I think about is, for instance, our own, uh, the administration travel that has been cut back. Um, for instance, Already in the new year, there's a, a, a conference coming up that I know I've registered for, and the one in Fayetteville, and others have as well. And I'm kind of what I'm kind of wondering is, we need to get definition to those kinds of things at the administration level too, which will be a guide for the other departments, I'm sure. Um, I don't know a lottery system or how we're going to work together to make that work to, that we spend that 17,000 I think it's 17,500 is the yeah, which, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is if, if, if we don't have a we've got to have a plan for that and yeah. those kinds of things we're going let, to let me specific. tell you what my plan is for that um, is that all travel uh, and, and the admin budget will be approved by me um, and you know, am, am I going to to say yes or no? You know, if the money's not there, yeah, I will. But what my job, I think, is going to be with with our travel budget 
is to organize it and if uh, if we're going to go to a, uh, a a trip out of state then you know I'll make sure that we're represented but maybe not four of us can go only two can go and then those two need to come back and when you come back we'll have a, a, a meeting 30 minutes prior to a council meeting or something and we'll get a briefing from the ones that went and said this is the cool things we saw so some great ideas and and get briefed on it the in-state uh, travel um, to the Arkansas Municipal League I think is uh, is fine for for us to do and, and and go to but but I'll watch that budget and I'll keep us in line with what we're doing same thing on the contingency fund uh, we're I'm gonna have to watch it and we'll we'll rotate we'll have to you know rotate you know sometimes not all of us will be able to go to uh, to represent the city maybe only half of us can go so I'm gonna watch those two things and you know our department heads are, are all on board of watching uh, every penny that that we spend and um, so I can I can assure you of that well I guess my, my only issue with that is that some of us uh, serve on national committees and national councils and when they have those meetings that's when they when, when the meetings are scheduled is usually scheduled around a conference or or um, some other some other uh, event that's going on. So it is, you know, if you don't if you don't attend those uh, those meetings, then you know you you'll eventually you lose your position on those councils and committees. And um, it, I will I will do a lot of good. I will try us. my best to to manage that. Uh, and, and we'll have to adjust it just like we did PD you know if it gets if we're here in um, um, in June and the admin budget is expired then we'll come back in and go hey you know we've got two people that are traveling to Washington in November we need to put another three thousand dollars in there just like we would um, you know for PD's budget so I mean I, I'm I'm honored that some of our council members are uh, uh, highly respected nationally and don't want that to end. So I'm I'm glad if you're one of those I'm certainly glad and, and I'm, we're all proud of you. I think Debbie is too, and I know uh, Mr. Witcher is. So it's a big uh, dog. we want you to keep showing off North Little Rock. You know, you think about it when you're meeting someone uh, or these even these vendors. Uh, we're putting North Little Rock's uh, finest uh, in in front of them, and uh, so I think it's well worth the money. I am not going to travel uh, out of state next year, so that will be a little extra money that uh, that we can have for uh, representatives to go to some of these other functions. Ms. Ross. I just want to say one thing too uh, on this travel that's cut if there's any department not just administration and police and fire if there's any department that has certification that they need to travel for to make sure that they come back and tell us that because I don't want anybody in the city not receiving the certifications that yeah. they need and, and we left those alone a little bit um, you know planning uh, has some certification uh, legal has some certification um, so those that had uh, certifications, uh, we we didn't cut them as much as we did everybody else. I mean, animal shelter. I mean, I know that they, you know, every department there's some kind of training or education that they need. I'm sure. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands and, that and they we'll can't come it. back. You know, I mean, yes. PD, it's hard to to peg. I, I'd be willing to bet that, you know, we could make PD budget work for training. Uh, where travel gets involved is that we don't have any control over is if we start having to send detectives uh, out of state you know for further investigation if we have a, a murder or you know and they have to go to Dallas or to Chicago or whatever else uh, well, we might not have any and we might have $20,000 worth I, I hope none 
you know, um, then we know that, that our crime is down. So. I have one more question on the budget. Yes. As far as on the, the homeless, the additional 25000 that Little Rock has requested, are we at the mercy of Little Rock from now on any time they want any additional money? If they come back and say next year we need an additional $50,000, are we, you know, you know, it's 25 this year. Where, where, what's the line and where's the judgment call on that? I don't know. Um, You're no help. I, know. <laughs> uh, I, I think that at some point in time, uh, you know, we're going to have to address that and that we you know that interlocal agreement that we have. I, b I believe that's split by a third and a third and a third, isn't it, Karen? Um, maybe Little Rock pays a third and we pay a third and. Is it you know, yeah, yeah we, they're, they're less fortunate sometimes, you know, we have to help them. Oh, I, I agree, but I'm just, who's calling the shots on the money? Yeah. In this letter from Mayor Stodola, he says that the total expense is 375 Little Rock has budgeted 250 and he's requesting 125 from North Little Rock. Okay, so they're it's paying two-thirds two and we're paying just a third. Okay. Which is um, we'll work on that this year. Before next year's budget, we'll you know, have an agreement. Uh, we certainly are pleased that they're paying two thirds, and that the that the um, building is is there. Uh, any other comments? Uh, what I'm going to do right this second is I am going to uh, recess. I'm not going to adjourn. I'm going to recess and. Um, uh, we've got some very special guests, and uh, Todd, I'm going to come down to the podium, and I want to remind uh, our guests that uh, we are live on television, so that don't tell any cranky jokes or anything. So, uh, our we are really excited about the Edwards family uh, uh, coming to North Little Rock, and uh, you know it's a multi-million-dollar day for for Levy and for Amboy. And we certainly want to welcome uh, Mr. Edwards to North Little Rock and your company's investment. Uh, I know that we've got some of the community leaders from from Levy and Amboy and, and even Park Hill um, that uh, this new store is going to serve. The uh, Cash Savers is going to bring a, uh, a $1.6 million payroll. $150,000 in sales tax. Um, they're going to be a valued uh, electric uh, customer of ours. So this is a win-win-win for for North Little Rock and for that part of our community. So I'm going to walk down to the podium and, and Todd and, and Terry and, and the Edwards family, if y'all come up, we'll visit just a little bit. Thank you, Mayor and, and, and Council Members. Uh, one thing I wanted to add with the, to the Mayor's list is this is just not a grocery store. This is a new marketing, retail marketing concept that North Little Rock will be the first store in Arkansas that the Edwards family is, uh, will use this uh, marketing concept. And Steve will talk a little bit more about that. Thank you, Todd. We're really excited about coming into North Little Rock. Our, our family opened the first grocery store in Little Rock uh, four years ago. We'd always been scared of the big city, but uh, it's worked out really well. It, each one of these stores that we have in Little Rock, it's like their own community. It's similar to where we're going to be up here. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's been a, gr a great deal for us. Uh, we, we looked at the North Little Rock market, had surveys done on four different locations and a couple of different types of formats, and the thing that came back the best is a deal that is called Cash Saver, and uh, we're going to have the same thing that we have in our other Edwards Food Giant stores in Little Rock, except we're going to be, it's, it, uh, we're not going to have a bakery deli. We are going to do barbecue, smoked chickens, those kind of things. But a huge expense in opening a grocery store 
is all the equipment and stuff that it takes to do a bakery deli and uh, and then the maintenance of that with employees and just the cost to operate that and uh, we're not doing the high-end decor it's going to be a pretty plain thing but uh, you're going to have the same offerings as far as private label merchandise and, and name brand merchandise and it's the we watched the concept our wholesaler associated wholesale grocers started this about three or four years ago and you know, we talked and said it's a, it's a fluke deal, and it's, we started watching it, and for three years now, just more and more people are doing it across the country through our wholesaler, and uh, it's the ones that have done it are doing more stores that way, but it's, it's basically a cost plus 10%. Uh, the, the price is on the shelf. When you check out, you'll have 10% added, uh, and then, then sales tax. And uh, that's the part you like. <laughs> but uh, it'll, it'll be about $150,000 a year each to the county and the city in sales tax, plus the part that comes from the state. And I really can't tell you what that is because we don't know what our mix is going to be, and the state's pretty much eliminated the food and sales tax. We don't know what the food and non food mix is going to be. But uh, the things you're really going to see that when you you do like uh, Little Debbie's and Frito Lay and things that are pre-priced, and and you see the much lower price that we're selling them for, and you add the 10 percent, and it's still a lot less. And and uh, a lot of people are having hard times these days. And and uh, if you can go in and save 10 percent or so on your grocery bill and still have all the offerings, I mean, we're going to have all the the Certified Angus beef cut by meat cutters in the store, some of the prepackaged stuff. Uh, uh, Swift Premium pork, all natural pork. Sanderson Farms, all natural chicken. It's going to be a full line grocery store. It's just not going to be anything fancy. And, uh, and that's where the cost savings have come in, not having to spend that money on the front end to, to do all those things. And uh, we think it's something you're really going to be happy about. The, the old Walmart building, we're taking 50000 out of the 70000 That building is, is owned by Doyle Rogers Company, managed by Tommy Lasseter, who's a partner in that. And uh, he's got people con that have contacted him already about taking the other space. And there's some other buildings across there that they own. And, and he's excited about that. We're going in. and. If you go out there now, you think a bomb dropped in it, but it's, it's uh, you know, we're doing all new parking lot lighting, new parking lot resurfacing. Um, Safety is a huge deal these days, and, you know, stuff's grown up around there, that, and we're having help and with uh, from the e economic development. Uh, what is it, uh, here? What? Um, they're helping us with our landscaping and things to really improve the the place and cutting down over overgrown trees and opening it up where you can it's you know it's going to be a viable place again and uh, it's jobs okay uh, probably 50 full-time 70 part-time jobs um, you know, it, it depends on our sales, and, and that's what we're projecting with the sales we're planning on doing the thing. Um, we're just really looking forward. We've had so many positive comments of people that have seen action going on around there, and, and people are really excited about it. Uh, just another choice to, to get a full-line grocery store at a lesser price. Um, sure. This is Gary Prophet, who's Vice President of Operations, and, and Gary lives in Cabot, has an office here in Little Rock at our store at Cantrell, Mississippi, and Paul Routon, and uh, these guys are the ones to keep everything together. Yeah, but, uh, and we, we certainly want to say thank you very much. Uh, this is our uh, Chamber of Commerce and our Economic Development Corporation uh, at its finest because uh, I know that they have worked with you and your, your staff to, to make this happen. Um, Paula and, and Bill, uh, stand up if you would. I, 
these are the two leaders of, of two of the neighborhoods uh, that you're going to be servicing and y'all be sure and meet and, and visit because these people touch uh, a lot of your uh, potential customers and, and they're great leaders in their community and we certainly do appreciate them. But what I'd really like to do is, is uh, get over here and, and y'all come up. Let's get a picture. Steve, that's okay. Uh, we want to put it on Facebook and let everybody know that, that the Edwards family's grocery is, is coming to Levy and uh, uh, we're excited about it. So, Todd? And Amboy. Yeah, Levy and Amboy and, and Park Hill. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it. Well, that was special, and uh, we haven't done that much here. And I thought that was a, uh, a good way to to do the six o'clock hour. Okay, I I mean, let's talk some more if you want to, but I'm I, I'm ready to go forward if y'all are, Miss Ross. There was one more thing. I don't know if we can squeeze this out of the parks budget, but you know, with the uh, with the burn. In the we can. parks, it's going to be another, squeezed out. Another three thousand. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a controlled burn. It's going to cost three thousand dollars, and we will have enough in our uh, in our budget to cover that. Okay. Any other costs, comments? Hi, right, well, Miss Ross. I want to say something. I know that we don't all agree on there on this, and we're never going to all agree on this because there's several things that I would I would cut additional and move around. And I know there's things that Beth would cut and move around. I went Alderman White, and I mean on and on and on. We all have different things, but I know it's a compromise, and it's hard to not compromise means not everybody gets everything they want. So well, I assure you. Um, that I think this is a fair budget, um, but if if we don't come up with some really great ideas, uh, 2015 we're going to see a whole lot of cuts, and um, we need to make sure that everyone knows that. Uh, you know that uh, the cuts are going to be deep in 2015 if if things don't change. Now I know that you said that you were going to have meetings with staff and everything. I still want to see a budget committee with council members on the budget committee similar to what other cities do uh, I don't know if you have four aldermen and the finance director and then staff or what else but yeah I mean I really in, in most cities they report monthly I mean you will you know when I read other cities city council you know mom you know, they have a monthly report you know with their sales tax are we doing good what are we down we're up just to let everyone know where you are at that time it, it, so uh, I'm wrestling with that. Uh, I, I thought we wanted to do that, but I don't. I certainly don't mind giving you the information. I mean, I think you already get it, don't you? Do you not get the our end of month numbers? I get the budget report, the full budget. Yeah, do you send that but to I don't everybody, know if everybody every month? Does. I've been sending that to uh, Diane, and I thought she was putting that out. Yeah. That that summary spreadsheet. Okay. But I. 
Let's let's talk about that right after the first year. I know um, Alderman Witcher and I visited about it briefly, and uh, uh, he had some concerns about it. But I, I don't know that I really care. I'm not, I'm not going to stand up on my chair and, and and fight one way or another. So if if y'all think that's the direction you want to go, I mean, he's got his opinions. I don't know that we need to cover it tonight, but we'll we'll make that decision in January. You know how we if we're going to set one up and how we set it up. Well, I'm in full support of it. I think uh, th there's some really hard decisions to be made. We got to make them, and we got to put together uh, the group of people that can move the information forward. So whatever, whatever it takes, and even if we have to hire in uh, uh, some help to help us get it done, I mean, we, it's just got to be done. Okay. We'll talk about it. You're going to make me talk one more time. <clears throat> okay. We have available to us on a monthly basis uh, a compilation of how our budget is doing, you know, how much we've spent and, and what's going on with that budget. Yeah, I would encourage each of you to try to, to get a hold of that and stand and, and follow it for a couple months to kind of get the flavor of, of what goes on. And, you know, and, and simply because you have 100% of the money uh, <coughs> budgeted in a particular account and it's 90% out in June or July, you, you know, it's because of the way the bills have to be paid. Uh, so, you know, those, those are there's some little intricacies that, that you need to need to become familiar That's going to change, though, Murray. Uh, going to change somewhat because we're only going to expense three months at a time. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, and, and you and I have had that discussion. Yep. Uh, you know, again, <clears throat> it, it's it's our responsibility to take care of the money. Uh, and, I, you know, I think that we're going to have to sit down and look at, at, at our entire budget and decide what we get for the best bung, best best value for our dollar. And, you know, and, and we might be doing some things now that we're not getting a good return on. And, I mean, you know, you have to look at it just like you do a business. You know, what's the bottom line? What's the return? What's the benefits that we're getting? And again, you know, you don't do that in a matter of a month or two. Uh, and we all have our ideas about that. So, I Mr. Fauci, you have anything? Yeah, I, I'm. You know, we keep saying next year we're going to make the hard decisions. One point one five eight six zero oh nine. One point one million dollars out of the reserves. We can't even decide to cut twenty, forty, fifty thousand dollars out of a line item now. And we're dipping in one point one million dollars in reserves. I, I, I don't see how any y'all can say that we're going to make the hard decisions next year when you can't even make some of the simpler hard decisions this year. So uh, it's just frustrating to me. Okay. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to get y'all's um, feedback. Previously, the budget exhibits included color graphs. Um, is it okay if we just emailed those out to you all rather than print them all off? This is pretty costly to print this amount of color. You look at last year's graph and it's probably the same as this year's. They're very similar. <laughs> so is that okay if I just email these? Absolutely. Okay, it's, it's my intention uh, to call this for a vote on the 23rd. We will have a separate resolution to approve the electric department budget on the 23rd. And we will have no more meetings uh, on the budget between now and then. Uh, so seeing nothing else, I'm going to adjourn. Thank you all very much. Department heads, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you.